All right. So if you were going to bet anything on the third overall pick, and like, uh, I guess, I guess, what would you do from a gambling standpoint on the third overall pick at this point? Because I, I, I like, I'm not betting Stingley if he's the favorite. I don't think it's crazy yeah. that they take Stingley third. I don't think it's crazy if they take Icky third. I don't think it's crazy if they take Neil. I, I don't think anything is off the table for the Texans. I, I believe they would love to trade down. They won't find somebody to do it. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't. I have some. I have Stingley and Sauce, Ahmad Gardner. Sauce Gardner, third overall. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's it. But I found myself while doing my final mock that was due several hours ago and is not finished, um, <laughs> leaning towards Icky at three. Yeah. So right now, if I'm like, I'm looking off FanDuel, Stingley is the favorite at plus 250. He just recently moved to the favorite at plus 300, a lot of books, and he's still going down. Uh, so if you got a piece of Stingley, awesome. Uh, earlier today, you could still get Stingley as just like a straight top five pick, uh, to be available at like, uh, I think plus 300 when I had it, I'm sure that number is going to be down a little bit now, but that's the sort of thing that I would rather do. And you just get yourself a little bit of protection, assuming maybe some of this hype is, is unwarranted, especially with the Giants sitting there at five. And we know the Giants are a corner potential team as well. If Stingley's that high, I will buy opposite and take Gardner at plus 430 right now in FanDuel. Gardner has been the consensus corner one this entire time. What What do you think yeah. about those two guys? Just from a pure evaluation standpoint, I mean, Stingley obviously has the insane 2019. Yep. But then Gardner comes from a school where, and uh, you know, since he's not you know this P5 powerhouse, but man, their defense is elite. I trust their defense. I trust the the way they teach the defense, and he seems his floor is much safer than Stingley's. The Stingley yeah. ceiling is probably higher, right? Uh, yeah, it's a good way of looking at it. Right now, by the way, Derek Stingley is plus 170 to be a top five pick, which to me is nice if you're not sold on Texas at three. But you know what's really weird, by the way? What's that? My buddy Newman just texted me a link to a tweet of yours about Cincinnati. The Bearcats? Something about Desmond Ritter. I don't yeah, know. Was, I, I just wrote about he was like, he, like It popped up. It was like, yeah, it was like Ben Solak on Twitter. I was like, what? Listen, I was like from, I'm Solak live right yeah. now. Dude. From uh, from a couple years ago, I've really liked a lot of these Cincinnati prospects. Uh, and it's excited the year, this year that these guys are coming out. It's been a really good team with good recruits and well coached and yada, yada, whatever. Stingley versus Sauce. Uh, sitting here with you, Will, in the comfort of my own home, drinking my coffee. I'll tell you, Stingley's <laughs> a better prospect. Uh because the, the the peak film was better. And also, I have a little bit better proof of concept, right? The thing with Sauce is these press man only corners, and I was a little bit hesitant around J.C. Horn out of South Carolina last year because of this. They do a really good job denying college receivers line of scrimmage. And when you deny those college receivers, you deny targets. When you deny targets, you deny opportunities for ball production, which doesn't mean you're a bad player. It just means when I go to the film to see how you perform at the catch point in phase downfield, right? In transition, in a break, on a route, things that matter to NFL teams, I don't have as many looks at it as I do usually otherwise, right? Well, uh, that creates uncertainty in the eval. Whereas with a guy like Stingley, who played a a much greater variety of coverages against a much greater variety of receiver styles as well, uh, I get a little bit better proof of concept. You know, if I'm picking the best film, if I'm picking like when you're on the field and you're healthy, right? For Stingley and for Sauce. So that's me sitting here. If I had my million dollar job of a general manager on the line, I probably wouldn't say it with my chest as much because there's <laughs> <laughs> there's that uncertainty around Stingley yeah. coming off of a major foot injury. Liz Frank is nothing to sneeze at. Uh and then also having I'd rather I'd rather I'd rather pick, I'd rather draft somebody who tore their ACL than somebody who had a Liz Frank. Yes, exactly. And so medical staff is a huge part of this, right? Uh always important to remember that a player's medical concerns is not a spectrum, it is black or white. Right. Uh, we always talk about like, oh, kind of like discount the guy around that works. Like once we get out of the top 10, top 15 players, but at this area, it's either white. We are comfortable black in the draft of this guy or black. We are not comfortable drafting yes. this guy, period. And knowing which team falls where is tough, right? It, um, no, it's, it's impossible. You yeah. cannot, you cannot know that it, like as a media member, the only yeah. way you can know that is if you are in the front office of that looking at the board and seeing right. that the names has a big red cross, right? That, that little red cross, like the health symbol on that saying, we're not like, he's up there, but we're not going to, he's not for us. Cause we, our doctors don't think he's going to make a whole first contract career or whatever. So if I were, if I were hanging my job on it, I'd probably 
and I, I knew I had a corner pick in the top five. I would, had to do a, I would have had to do a ton of work to feel good about Stingley. And maybe I would. Maybe, but like without the access and without that process, I don't really know. And so that like that ceiling floor is a good way of thinking about it. But really, it's kind of the volatility of it. Here right now, I think everything lands heads for both players. Stingley will be the better NFL corner. Just you got to flip a lot more coins for Stingley. And I don't know how that's going to fall.